So, who here likes to use face filters for your posts on social media? Maybe a show of hands. Who uses a navigational app to help you find the fastest route to your destination? Well, congratulations to all of you. You're already embracing the future and you're using artificial intelligence as part of your daily lives. And for those of you that may be part of my generation, by artificial intelligence or AI for short, I will not be referring to Skynet and the Terminator, but more to the type of artificial intelligence that could potentially help us solve some of our greatest challenges. The truth is that AI is not something new. It was first studied by Alan Turing in the early 1950s, and then followed up by a team of researchers that wanted to explore how computer systems could learn from experience. So basically, how to teach a computer to learn in the same way that you and I learn every day. And it could be fair to say that AI is at early, it's early stages of development, but the truth is that we've already done some very good work. If we just take a look at what, he, what we have done in, just, uh, in 2015 and 17, there was a team of researchers who announced that they were able to teach a computer to recognize speech at the same level as a professional transcriber, and also recognize patterns in images at the same level as a at the same level as an average human being. So, and by the way, this is the technology that we currently use today when we take those selfies and put on those filters with dog ears and a funny nose. Just last week, there was an announcement that, or a video that showed a digital assistant that was making a phone call to a hair salon to book an appointment, and the, the clerk on the other end didn't even notice that she was talking to a machine. So we can see that disruptive technologies can evolve quite fast, and AI will not be the exception. But how come that it is now that it seems to be like an explosion of information around AI? Well, I would say it's because of three main things. The first one is because today we use more sensors than we probably did 10 years ago. The second one is that we store and collect more data. And third, we have more powerful algorithms that can help us extract insights from this information. We, s we have uh, sensors measuring pretty much everything, from our heart rate on our smart watches to our location on our phones. And we decided that it would be better if all of these devices can interconnect into each other. And if we let them talk to each other, then of course that can generate a better user experience for all of us. But as you can see, with all the flow of information and all the connections that get created, this mesh can get very easily and very quickly into something very complex. So we will need smart machines that can help us make sense out of all of it and manage all of these connections as well. And of course, when I say smart machines, this starts getting a little bit creepy and we start getting some concerns, like how do we make sure that these machines do not turn evil on us? Like which mechanisms do we need to start thinking about to implement today so that th they evolve in benefit of human beings. Should we be asking developers to take a Hippocratic Oath, similar to what we do with doctors, so that they develop in benefit of human life? Which changes do we need to make to our current laws? Are we prepared to adopt these changes? How do we make sure that this technology is safe and reliable for everyone? Can we teach morals to a machine? We already see controversies starting to develop just with uh, self-driving cars that need to make a decision in split seconds just before an imminent collision. What should they do then? How do we make sure that this technology is inclusive for everybody and everyone, every, each, every member of society? And finally, one of the most asked questions is, how will AI affect our jobs? And I'm very sorry if I'm going to disappoint you, but we will not have all the answers for these questions today. We may just be a little bit too early, because we don't know with certainty all the areas in which AI will have an effect. And I will give you an example of why this is still unknown. When cars started to first be built in mass, there was a very clear shift of labor from cars that were being, from, from works that were in, in workshops, that were built in carriages, to new jobs that were more focused on manufacturing. But there was another effect 
people wanted to buy cars and they needed money. So banks realized that there was an opportunity for them to create a new financial instrument, which was the personal loan. So more branches started opening up in the, in the country and therefore more jobs were created. But even more so, there was impact in other areas that were unexpected. For example, now people were traveling at higher speeds and traditional advertising was becoming, or the, the traditional billboards were becoming obsolete. So companies needed to find new ways in which they could do some marketing so that companies could or users could still identify which brand was being uh, advertised. And that is when the corporate logos appeared. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that, of course, AI will cause a shift in, in labor, but it will open up opportunities in areas that are still, that maybe we don't even imagine yet. And this may sound a little bit futuristic to all of us, but the truth is that AI is already here. It's already changing the ways in which we do many of our activities, and it's actually helping us solve some of our greatest challenges. For example, in terms of scarcity of food in the world, it is helping farmers uh, increase the yield of their land by telling them when to water or when to add more nutrients to their crops. In education, it's helping teachers reduce or, or schools reduce the rate of school dropouts by identifying behaviors in students and patterns that, so that then teachers can take corrective action and help these students at risk stay enrolled. In diversity and inclusion, it is helping create more inclusive experiences for people with low vision capabilities by creating and developing applications that can read out loud and identify which paper bill someone, someone is holding or the content of, the, of a legal document that they are about to sign. In healthcare, it is helping or aiding oncologists to identify cancer at earlier stages, increasing the life expectancy of patients. And these are only a few examples of how AI is helping us today. But just imagine how it can help us in the future with the challenges that are still to come. There's a, and we, because we need to think about how we will adapt to all of these changes. There's a quote by, by a famous or a well-known professor in India that says, teachers will not be replaced by technology, but teachers who do not use technology will be replaced by those who do. And we could very easily change teaching with any other activity, and this quote would still be true. We need to think about and prepare to those changes and be able to coexist and work together with technology. Because in the future, we will need, there will be an increase of demand for a more specialized workforce, like data scientists or virtual experience managers, AI engineers, robotic experts, you name it. And AI will be standing side by side to all of those activities. We are standing at a pivotal point in time in which technology is empowering all of us to make a difference. My final question to you here today is, how will you use AI to change our world?